Okay guys, today I want to teach you all about bussing, the pros and cons, why you should be using bussing if you want your music to sound professional, the different types of bussing you can use, some really cool advanced bussing tips. I'm going to show you exactly how you can set up the different types of audio buses. I'm going to be showing you in Ableton Live and I'll show you in Logic as well. Basically the ultimate guide to using bussing in your music production. For regular viewers, you'll notice I'm not in the EDM tip studio. I'm instead in some weird prismic prison. That's because I got a bus to get here. Anyway, without further ado, let's hop into the door and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about using audio buses in your music production. So firstly, let's touch upon what audio buses are. You may have heard the term banded around a bit, audio bus, audio busing, let's bus these things together and just not really know what it meant. Basically, a bus is a conduit, like a bus that you get onto as a person. It's where you can bring in multiple inputs of audio into one place, and that one place is a bus. It's as simple as that. Here's a quick diagram just to make it super simple. Now, you might have seen bus spelled B-U-S or B-U-S-S. It really doesn't matter. Either way is fine. I think B-U-S is kind of the American version and B-U-S-S is the British version. But either way, don't worry about it. You're all good. But why should you be using buses? Well, there are three main reasons. The first is that it saves you time because if you've got several audio inputs coming in and being processed by, say, one filter, for example, you're only setting up one filter and automating that instead of, say, four for the separate channels. The second reason, and for exactly the same as the first, is that it saves your CPU as well. So if you've got four or five different sets of audio plugins, obviously that's four or five times more CPU that you're using up. If you've got those four channels all going into one bus and you're just using one set of plugins to process it, obviously you're going to be saving on your CPU so your computer is not going to be put under so much strain. The third, and frankly the most important reason, is that it just expands your creative possibilities for what you can do with the sound, and I'm going to share with you exactly what those creative opportunities are in a couple of minutes. Before we do that though, let's touch upon the different kind of buses there are. Now there are two main kinds of bus. One is usually just referred to as an audio bus, and this is where you have two or more separate channels going into one bus. 100% of each of those channels going into this one bus channel. Now the second main type of bus there is, is an auxiliary channel, sometimes called a send channel or a return channel, but it all means the same thing. So let's look at both of those types really quickly. We're going to be using my brand new song which is out today, which is Plan 9 by The Visionaires. <laughs> If you like it, you can check it out with the link below this video. Now in Ableton, when you bust things together, you can actually use grouping as well, but it's the same thing. So if we look here, we've got a guitar and a riff, and then this channel called Hi. We've grouped them together. In Ableton, it's using Command G, but in Logic, you'd use a dedicated audio bus. You can do this in Ableton too, so I'm going to show both of those techniques in a minute. But you can see all of the guitar, all of the riff, and all of that high are going into this one riff audio bus. So let's have a listen to that. So we can see guitar, riff, and high all have their own effects anyway, but they're going into this audio bus, and then there's some EQ there, uh, and then there's some LFO tool as well. Right, and the second type, as I said, is an auxiliary channel. So you can see here in Ableton, we've got these different auxiliary channels down here. And in Logic, again, they're going to be presented usually over to the right of the mixer. So we can see here, if we turn off our return channels, it hides them and we can press them and it's showing them. And this is where you can use these send knobs on your mixer. Every door has them and you can decide how much of that dry signal you feed through to that auxiliary channel. So from a routing perspective, you've got your normal sound. So here we've got an atmosphere sound, which is just jungle recording and now I want to feed this through to some reverb so I've created an auxiliary channel put a reverb on it this Valhalla reverb and now I can decide how much of this atmosphere by using the send knob I feed through to this auxiliary channel so if we listen to that on its own it's just the reverb now it's quite a close tight reverb so let's just expend it so you can really hear that it's reverb then so they are the two main types of audio buses simple as that so now let's look how we can actually set them up in these different doors. So in Ableton, to create the first type of audio bus, as I said, there are two options. One, you can just select two different channels that you want both to go into this group, and you can press Command G, or if you're on Windows, it would be Control and G. And now we've got this group, which is taking both the input from the kick and the drums into this one channel. Now the second way that you can do it in Ableton is to create an audio channel, 
like so. Open up the routing, and then we can call this bus, or bus with one S. Uh, and then we can just choose the output of each of the tracks that we want to go into this bus and select the name of that bus. So instead of the master channel, which is, and of itself, a bus, we are going to choose the bus channel here. So the kicks and the drums are now both going into this bus. We need to turn the monitoring on so we can actually hear them both going in. So let's just see an example of that. I'll program a kick in and I'll program in a clap. And we can see here that both the kick and the drums are going into this bus channel. And then you can see this bus channel is just going to the master. So now let's look how to create the second type of bus in Ableton Live, the auxiliary channel. Well, you can go up to the create and just choose return track because that's what they're called in Ableton. And you'll see here we've got this return track. If we switch to the mixer view, you can see it's over here. The shortcut to do it is to use command, option and T, and that's going to do exactly the same thing. The maximum amount of auxiliary channels you can have in Ableton is 12. So now let's look at both of those techniques, but in Logic Pro. So you can see we've got three audio channels. So if we were to create the first type of bus, what you can do is just go into your output, which is by default goes to stereo out, which is this bus here. It is indeed a bus. So we can just choose our output and then choose one of these buses. So let's choose bus number one. So now we can choose that same output for a couple of our other tracks as well. So now we've got audio one and audio two are both routed to this bus channel, which I'm just gonna name, let's name this bus. And then we can send this third audio channel there as well, or you could send your MIDI channels there either, doesn't matter. So that's the way we can create that first type of bus in Logic. Now the second type, the auxiliary channel, is just as simple. If we go into our sends here, we can just choose another bus. As I said, they're all buses. So let's just choose 10 as an arbitrary number for our auxiliary channel. I'm just going to call this reverb. And then we can also select this on our other channels as well. Or we could even route it from the audio bus that we have. So we've got everything going 100% to this bus. And we could then use this bus and send a portion of it to our auxiliary channel. And now we can decide how much of these channels we want to feed through to that auxiliary channel. So let's actually look and listen to what that sounds like and why you might use it. If you're enjoying this video so far and finding it useful, please let me know in the comments, let me know what you're struggling with in music production. I can't promise I'll help, but I can promise to try. And if you enjoyed this video, please do like it and share it with your friends. It really helps me out, it's the best thing you can do. Thank you, okay, without further ado, let's crack on. Now before we go into some really cool examples, I wanna show you one more tip for using buses in Ableton Live specifically, and that's if you are using one of these drum rack machines or drum rack devices. So if we go into this, we can see there's several drums all loaded in to this one drum rack. Now, if you do this, what I'm about to show you, you can send a little bit of each of these drums to your auxiliary channel, which is really great because then each of them can share the same reverb, which is great for your CPU, and it's great for making them sound like they're all coming from the same space. Now, the way to do that, is to open up this little routing button here, press the R button here, and then this section pops up. Now you right click, press create return chain, and then you can choose whichever one of your return channels or auxiliary channels from this drop down menu. Now you can close that up once that's done, press this S button, and you can see then you've got separate send controls for each of these drums. Just a little quick tip here. And if you want to see why using auxiliary channels for vocal reverbs are especially powerful, you can click on the link that's popping up now and watch that video on vocal processing. Anyway, on to the next point. So let's look at what we can do when we feed two different channels into one audio bus. So we've got our kick and our bass routed here into our kick and bass bus. And that allows us to apply different filters to the kick and the bass together. So let's have a listen as to what that can do and why you might do it. So we can see here, the kick and the bass are being processed together. We've just got a filter opening up. We've got the high pass filter opening up as well. We've got some compression that glues them both together. And let's turn off this bus processing and hear the difference. So we're just gelling them together a bit and we don't need to have two different filters 
for both the kick and the bass, they're just both being sent to that one filter. But now I want to touch upon the mistakes I see people making when it comes to busing. Well, there are a couple of things that always stick out. One is making sure that when you are sending signals to your auxiliary channels, you make sure you have your post and your pre set up correctly. So really quickly, if post is selected, the signal is being sent to the auxiliary channel after your channel fader. So if you turn your channel fader down, the signal going to the auxiliary channel will also be lower because the send control is after your channel fader. So really quickly, here's the example of that. So here's our riff. We can hear this delay is on an auxiliary channel. And we've got post selected. So if we take it down, we can hear our auxiliary channel is getting quieter too. Now the difference is, so if we just select pre instead of post, we can see it aligns to this send knob here. Now if we turn this channel fader down, it won't make any difference to what's being sent to the auxiliary channel because it's being sent there before our channel gets turned down by the fader. So we can still hear it. a crucial thing to be aware of because it can make a massive difference if used the wrong way. Now the other mistake I see people making all the time is when they learn about busing they're kind of very tempted to overcomplicate it and have buses within buses. I've done this myself as well. I used to set up really intricate templates with all these different buses being sent everywhere but the more buses that you have especially as they're kind of layered into each other on a hierarchy. So for instance here we can see I've got our bass sounds three of them going into a bass bus, and then I've got the bass bus and the kick going into a kick and bass bus, then that goes to the master channel. That for me is as detailed and as complicated as I want my busing hierarchy to be. Sometimes I see people with perhaps four or five different layers, maybe even more in their busing hierarchy, but you have to remember the signal flow. So everything that you change on uh, within here, within the separate channels or on the bus, affects the entire sound. So if you think of it a bit like an acrobat on top of an acrobat on top of an acrobat in this big triangle, if that bottom acrobat starts wiggling around and you change it too drastically, it's gonna ruin the whole thing and it's all gonna come crashing down. And that's one of the reasons why I would say keep it to two or three levels in your busing hierarchy as a maximum. The other mistake I see is just people not using buses at all. So if you've got your kick and your bass bus together, you can just gel it together with a bit of compression, make it sound really solid. Again, you can check out my newest low end video, which is popping up now, which will give you some great tips on getting your low end perfect. And again, when it comes to vocals, having your lead vocals and your backing vocals both going into one bus, so you can gently compress them together and make it sound like just a lovely cohesive whole is really the difference between an amateur sounding mix and a pro sounding mix. So I hope you found this useful guys. Don't forget you can download my free mixing guide below this video. Check out my music production accelerator if you want to get signed to the world's biggest labels and make money from your music. And don't forget to check out my brand new track Plan 9 by The Visionaires below this video. You can hear it playing in the background now and thank you so much for your support. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Cheers and happy producing.